in this video we'll study about the main germ cells and their maturation that is the spermatogenesis before going in detail we'll study about the main organs of reproduction in short so the main reproductive system consists of two gonads the testis so this is the testis testis or a pair of gonads which produce the male gametes or spermatozoa and they secrete the testicular hormone then you have the copulatory organ the penis which ejaculate the spermatozoa into the vagina of the female during sexual congress then you have a long complex system of ductules and duct which extends from the testis to the penis and help in the storage of the male gametes and subsequent conduction into the copulatory organ then you have the accessory sex glands such as the seminal vesicles then you have the prostate then you have the bulbo urethral gland and the urethral gland so they secrete a fluid for the nourishment and the transport of the spermatozoa the reflex contraction of the smooth muscles of the glands causes a thorough mixture of their secretion and the spermatozoa the mixture is known as the semen and it is emitted during ejaculation we'll see about the testis and its duct each testis is an ellipsoid organ and it is suspended into the scrotum by the spermatic cord in the adult it is about 5 cm length 3 cm in anteroposterior diameter and 2.5 cm in breadth it weighs about 10.5 to 14 g the testis is covered from outside inward by an incomplete serous membrane that is known as the tunica vaginalis so this whatever highlighted in the green is the tunica vaginalis then inside this you have the tunica albuginea then you have the tunica vasculosa the tunica albuginea forms a thick and complete fibrous envelope for the testis along the posterior border of each testis the tunica albuginea projects as a incomplete vertical partition that is known as the mediastinum testis so whichever highlighted in the green is the mediastinum testis from the mediastinum numerous fibrous septae so these are the fibrous septae so these whichever highlighted in the green or the fibrous septae which radiates outward and divides the testis into about 200 to 300 cone shaped lobules of the testis so these are the whichever highlighted in the green is the lobules of the testis each lobule contain one or three seminiferous tubules so you can see the tubules inside the lobules between the seminiferous tubules lie a group of interstitial cells of leydig which secretes the male sex hormone the testosterone each tubule consists of a coiled part in front and the straight part behind when uncoiled the length of the each tubule is about 70 cm to 80 cm that is about 2 feet the straight part of each tubule joined to form in the mediastinum a network of tubule that is known as the rete testis so whichever highlighted in the green is the rete testis about 12 to 15 efferent ductules so whichever highlighted in the green is the efferent ductules they arise from the upper end of the rete and en enter into the head of the epididymis now whichever highlighted in the green is the epididymis so the upper portion of the epididymis is the head the efferent ductules unite to form a single duct that is known as the canal of epididymis the canal of epididymis 
by its convolution constitute the body and the tail of the epididymis when uncoil the length of the canal is about 6 meters about 20 feet the vast difference so this is the vast difference so you can see the highlight in in the green is the vast difference or ductus a difference so it is about 45 cm or 18 inches long and begins from the tail so this is the tail of the epididymis so it begins from the tail of the epididymis as a continuation of the canal it passes successively along the posterior border of the testis the inguinal canal and the lateral pelvic wall then it runs behind the base of the urinary bladder so this is the base of the urinary bladder so it runs behind the base of the urinary bladder and joins with the duct of the seminal vesicle to form the ejaculatory duct the ejaculatory duct passes through the prostate so this is the prostate it passes through the prostate and opens into the urethra at the level of the colliculus seminalis next we'll see about the seminiferous tubules so this is a schematic picture of the cross section of the seminiferous tubule these tubules are the essential structural unit of the testis each tubule consists of a basement membrane then which is lined internally by several layers of epithelial cells the epithelial cells are of two kinds one you have the sustentacular cells of sertoli then you have the male germ cells in the various stages of development the sustentacular cells are elongated polyhedral and extends from the basement membrane to the lumen of the tubule they provide nourishment to the immature sperm cells and they maintain a cohesion of the spermatogenic cells then they phagocytose the residual bodies derived from the spermatids and they provide a barrier a testis blood barrier so that the spermatogenesis can takes place in an antigen free environment in addition the sertoli cells probably secrete estrogen the sperm cells act as a secluded antigen and the testis a blood barrier prevents the development of anti spermic antibody in the plasma the germ cells of the tubules are arranged in three layers the outer layer consists of spermatogonia which are derived from the primordial male germ cells by mitosis and they present diploid number of chromosome that is 46 then you have the intermediate layers consists of two zones an outer and inner so the outer zone is occupied by the primary spermatocytes which are the daughter cells of the spermatogonia produced by the mitosis and they also contain a diploid number of chromosome the inner zone consists of the secondary spermatocytes which are formed by the first meiotic division or reduction division of the primary spermatocytes and each cell presents haploid chromosome 23 chromosome the innermost layer consists of spermatids so these are the spermatid which forms the innermost layer they are the direct descendants of the secondary spermatocytes resulting from the second meiotic division each spermatid presents haploid chromosome that is 23 the spermatids are converted into spermatozoa by metamorphosis without further cell division next we'll see about the spermatogenesis in detail it is a process of maturation of male gametes in the wall of the seminiferous tubules and it starts at puberty but when does it stop is not known because it is extremely variable 
it includes a series of cyclical changes for the conversion of primordial male germ cells into spermatozoa the spermatogenesis consists of spermatocytosis then you have the meiosis then you have the spermiogenesis this is the primordial germ cells or primitive male germ cell so the, they divide by mitosis and they form dark type a spermatogonia so these dark type a spermatogonia acts as stem cells each dark type a spermatogonia give rise to two daughter cells by mitosis to form one dark type a spermatogonia and one light type a spermatogonia the dark type a spermatogonia is kept as a reserve for the repetition of the next cycle the light type a cell is more differentiated and undergo mitotic division to form two type b spermatogonia the mitosis extends to produce about four generations of type b cells each type b cells further divides into two primary spermatocytes by mitosis and the primary spermatocytes consist of 46 chromosome that is 44 autosome and then you have xy chromosome then comes the first meiotic division or reduction division so each primary spermatocytes divide by first meiotic division or reduction division and give rise to two daughter cells they are known as the secondary spermatocytes and the sper secondary spermatocytes consist of 23 chromosome haploid chromosome of two variety so one with 23 with x chromosome the other one with y chromosome unlike the o side however both secondary spermatocyte contains equal amount of cytoplasm and they are equally active the secondary spermatocytes almost immediately complete the second meiotic division results in the formation of four spermatids therefore one primary spermatocytes yield four spermatid among the four two are with x chromosome and two are with y chromosomes the spermatids then metamorphosed into spermatozoa in both spermatogenesis and oogenesis each daughter cell of first meiotic division possesses 23 chromosome the haploid chromosome with 2n dna strands whereas each daughter cell of second meiotic division they possess the haploid chromosome with 1n dna strands because the dna replication does not take place in meiosis 2 next we'll see about the morphological transformation of spermatids into spermatozoa without further cell division which is known as the spermiogenesis initially each spermatid possesses a spherical a nucleus then you have the golgi apparatus and then you have the centrosome with two centrioles and then you have numerous mitochondria and abundant cytoplasm as the conversion progresses the flattened vesicle of the golgi apparatus containing the acrosomal granules they coalesce and they spread over the anterior pole of the nucleus forming the head cap the head cap covers the 2/3 of the nucleus the centrosome occupies the posterior pole of the 
nucleus opposite the head cap. They split into two centrioles which give rise to the axial filaments of the body and the tail of the spermatozoa. The two centrioles delimit the middle piece or the body of the spermatozoa and the posterior one forms the ring centriole. So this is here you will get the posterior centriole that forms the ring centriole. Around the middle piece, so this is the middle piece, so here you can see the mitochondria. Uh, these mitochondria, they group and they aggregate in a spiral manner and they form the mitochondrial sheath. Finally, the spermatid elongates and the nucleus is evaginated from the cytoplasm but remains within the cell membrane and this constitute the head of the spermatozoa. Some amount of cytoplasm surrounds the body or the middle piece but most of the cytoplasmic content is extruded from the cell as a residual body. The head of the immature spermatozoa, they plunge into the depressions at the surface of the cells of the sertoli. When maturity is reached, they are set free into the lumen of the seminiferous tubule and the whole process of conversion from type A spermatogonia to the spermatozoa requires approximately 64 days in man. The spermatocytosis is about 16 days, the meiosis 1 is 8 days, the meiosis 2 is about 16 days and spermiogenesis takes place about 24 days. The fully formed spermatozoa in the seminiferous tubules are non-motile and they reach the epididymis by suction action. The mucous membrane of the rete testis, the efferent ductus and the proximal part of the canal of the epididymis reabsorb the fluid product of the testis. As a result, a negative pressure is created in the epididymis and this helps in the transport of the spermatozoa from the seminiferous tubule to the epididymis. The spermatozoa can live for a considerable time in the epididymis and the vast difference. They survive anaerobically on carbohydrate metabolism by fermentive process. When mixed with the secretion of the accessory sex glands, they become actively motile and progress in the forward direction by lashing movement of their tail. At ejaculation, the longevity of the spermatozoa is limited and depending upon the reaction of the surrounding medium. An acid medium is detrimental to the sperms. The fertilizing capacity of the sperm persists up to 24 to 48 hours after ejaculation. In a single ejaculation of normal male, about 200 to 300 million sperms are emitted and the amount of semen is about 2 to 5 ml. If the concentration of the spermatozoa in the semen is only 20 million or less per ml, the individual is usually sterile. Next we will see the structure of the spermatozoa. A mature spermatozoa consists of the head, then you have the neck, then you have the middle piece and then you have the tail or principal piece. It measures about 50 microns in total length of which the tail forms about 4 fifth. Next we will see about the head. The head is about 4 microns in length and contains a nucleus which has 23 chromosome, the haploid chromosome and it is ovoid in shape. When viewed in profile, it resembles like a pear. Anterior two-third of the nucleus is overlapped by a bilaminar acrosomal or head cap.
so this is the acrosomal or the head cap which is derived from the golgi apparatus the entire head is enveloped by the cell membrane so this is the cell membrane and it is devoid of intervening cytoplasm next we'll see about the neck so this is the neck is a constriction of about 0.3 microns long and contain one centriole with two cylinder one is placed transversely close to the nucleus the other is placed longitudinally it consists of nine thick filaments which are continuous behind with the axial filaments of body and the tail next we'll see about the body the body is about 4 microns long and this is cylindrical in form and contains from within outward first you have the axial filament then you have the mitochondrial sheath then you have some amount of cytoplasm and then you have the cell membrane this is a diagrammatic representation and this is the body of the spermatozoa so when you see the body of the spermatozoa you have the axial filament so this is the axial filament so axial filament consists of a pair of central filament so this is the central fibrils which are surrounded by two rows of peripheral fibrils each row presents nine filament the outer row presents the coarse filament and the inner one presents a thin and they are arranged as nine doublets the mitochondrial sheath it is derived from the aggregation of a numerous mitochondria which are arranged in helicoidal manner around the axial filament this is the ring centriole or the terminal centriole it is situated at the junction of the body and the tail and it is probably derived from the detached posterior cylinder then we'll see about the tail so this is the tail and it is about 40 micron long and they contain from within outwards you have the axial filament then you have the fibrous sheath then you have a thin film of cytoplasm and the cell membrane so here you can see the axial filament so the axial filament is uh, extend as a continuation from the body the coarse filament of the outer row blends with the inner row in the proximal part of the tail the fibrous sheath consists of two thick longitudinal bands passing on each side of the axial filament the thick bands are connected to each other by transversely oriented fibrils on cross section the tail is oval in outline the two thick bands of the fibrous sheath establish a bilateral symmetry of the tail which decides the plane of movement of the spermatozoa in the terminal portion of the tail the fibrous sheath is absent so this is the fibrous sheath it is absent in the terminal part of the tail and this part is known as the end piece so here you can see this is a tail and this is the fibrous sheath and here you can see the green color you can see the transverse fibrils so deep to this these are the longitudinal axial filaments which are coarse and this coarse filaments they blends with the fine filament so here you can see the highlighted part is the end piece of the spermatozoa where the fibrous sheath is absent so here you can see this is the fibrous sheath and this is absent in the end piece